Okay, so today for my lunchtime escapade, I'm going to take a 747 in Flight Simulator 2020. I'm going to try and remember how to power the thing up and get it up and running. I'm going to fly it from Stansted Airport over to Birmingham. I'm not going to use air traffic control, but I have got a flight plan programmed in to make it all a little bit easier. So let's see if we can remember how to start up a 747. So we're sat inside, it's cold and dark on the tarmac. We haven't done anything with it yet. So we need to look up above our head at these controls and I'm going to straighten the screen up a little bit so we can see a little bit of what we're doing. Uh, we're slightly in the wrong place so I'm going to scoot. I can't remember the key to go forwards and backwards. So that's better. Okay, first thing we're going to need to do, same as with any of the Boeing family, is turn the battery on. I don't think we've got external power available. Yeah, you'd have to talk to the tower. It's a bit of a circular conversation. To, to get power, you need to talk to the tower. You can't talk to the tower without power. Anyway, turn the battery on. Standby power to auto. So that's this knob here. Next thing you're going to do is turn the APU on. So we turn the APU to start and then it will come back to on. Then we need APU gen on when available. So APU gen should light up when it's available. I wonder if the ECAM screen works in this thing to show us the APU. Hmm. I wonder where it is on this one. I don't think such a thing exists. Oh, it's available. So the APU is a small jet engine in the back of the plane. If we go to the outside view, we can have a look at it and show you it. It's in there. That's the exhaust for it. So up in here, there's a little jet engine and it provides electricity for most of the systems, but it also provides um, compressed hot air to spin the engines up. So in the 747 and like in the 737 I think yeah APU bleed is automatic so it's on over here by default the engine bleed. We will turn that off in a minute or, or at least in flight simulator it's switched on by default. I don't think it should be to be honest but there we go. So we've turned the APU generators on so now we'll start to hear sounds. So that's the pressure being pushed around the system. Next we do is fuel pumps. So it's all of them basically. Uh, press means there's no pressure. So it's just a warning. That's because the engines aren't running yet. It's nice and simple. Uh, we need to turn the beacon on. So that's over here. We'll turn them both. Uh, engine start switches. Pull them. So these are the engine start switches. So you pull each of these out. And you should do this one at a time, but this doesn't simulate it properly. So I'm going to start all the engines at once. This is switching on the fuel for the engines, by the way. And you will now see the numbers climbing on the N1 reading for each engine. So you've got N1 and N2 for the engines. N1 is the gas turbine, N2 is the the turbo fan. Or the other way around, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so while we're waiting for the engines to come up to speed, there's not much to do, because after the engines have come up to speed, we would turn the APU off. But what we are going to do while we're sitting here waiting is just go and check the lights. So we want the lav lights on, we want the strobe lights on, we want the logo on, I guess. No, I know. Actually, you, you don't need to bother with that at night so people get to see what airline you're taxiing around as. Uh, windshield de-ice. I don't think I need that today. And that's pretty much it. We're just waiting for the engines, really. Are they stable? They look it. So we can turn off the APU at this point. 
So normally you would be turning off the engine bleed, the APU bleed, and then you would turn off the APU, and that should switch those off automatically, and it has. So that's good. So at this point, you could start talking to air traffic control. The bit that's a bit bizarre, I think, is we've started the simulator. We've just started it from cold, so we've done nothing. And yet, if we go and zoom out on the range, or sorry, yeah, increase the range so we can see further, it's got our flight plan in it. That's what that pink line is that we can see, or magenta line. Uh, if we go and look at legs in here, yeah, it's, how did that get programmed in? We've just turned, turned the aircraft on. It's all a bit bizarre. There really should be some sort of simulation of either loading the flight plan that the simulator has given us or programming it ourselves. Anyway, let's go outside. Now, in Flight Simulator, if you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of going through the menus, you can press Shift-P to push back, which I've just done, and you'll see the, the tractor is coming in. Now, before he attaches to me, if I want this to happen fairly quickly, I have to release the parking brake, which on a 747 is this little switch here. So I have now released the parking brake, so pulling that up, switches the parking brake on. So now I can't remember how you steer this thing when it's on the truck. So I'm just going to let it push me backwards until I'm happy that I want to stop. So I'll push back until I nearly hit the, um, the opposite gates. So we're being pushed back, which is good. See, because we're going to taxi along here, around the corner and onto the runway over there. So we'll just let this push us back for a few moments. Really, you should push back before you turn the engines on. So I'm doing things out of sequence. So that's probably given us enough room to turn, hasn't it? So if I press Shift P again, he should disconnect in extreme speed. Usually it takes a long time for these trucks to do that kind of thing. Okay, so we need to go and switch on TCAS, which is Traffic Collision and Avoidance System. So that's over here. We would typically put on TARA mode. And then uh, we need to put the flaps down. So we can see the flaps indicator over here. We want flaps 5 for takeoff typically. And we should have room now. You can see the tractor getting out of our way. So we are going to steer left. Open the engines ever so gently. And we're turning. I'm just going to check what my sound settings are like because I was messing around with this last night for another flight. Yeah, I've turned the sound right down. So let's turn it back up so you can hear it properly. So let's taxi out to the wrong way. As I said, we're not going to do air traffic control for this flight. It's just a quick demonstration. And, and for me to get another look and see if they've improved it at all. So we're taking off runway 22, I think. So I need to start thinking about that. While we're steering out, I'll get this ready. So heading, we want this to be 220. Indicated airspeed 200 is fine. Altitude, we'll only go for 8,000 feet or so. I guess we could go for 10,000. I doubt we'll get there. No, let's go for 
6,000 feet. I'm going to do a low altitude flight. Okay, so let's concentrate on getting this out onto the, the runway. I've got the weather on live, traffic's on live, so if we see any other aeroplanes around, we'll have to wave to them. Because we have a flight plan programmed in, as soon as we take off, we can go for uh, LNAV mode, lateral navigation, which means the aircraft should steer itself along our flight plan. Who's that? That's my daughter, it's home. She's been away out for lunch. Okay, so rather than come to a stop, I'm just going to accelerate straight onto the runway. Throttle. Rotate. V one. Gear up. Flaps up. Our speed for 250. So the plane is now flying itself. Should we look outside. So that kind of behaved extremely predictably, didn't it? You can see Stansted over there, we've just taken off from. Just flying over there. I wonder what that town is below. Flight center is ridiculous, isn't it? The quality of the, the reflections and the light. So we're just coming up to 3,500 feet. 3,700, 800, 900. Should we go for 10,000 feet? We may as well. So we're fo following a standard instrument departure at the moment. If we go and load up little nav map while we're flying, we should be able to see it actually. Or at least see where we are. So scenery library is sim flight sim 2020. Uh, simulator connection is to FSX. Connect. Delete the track. Centre on the aircraft. So where are we? There's Stansted, which we're leaving behind. And we're going to Birmingham, which is over here. So it's not a very long flight at all. So if I... Yeah, I'll leave the screen like that. windows out of the way so we can just see it
there we go. So there's us, uh, and there's Birmingham. So the thing that's of interest to me is how well does this now follow the autopilot? Is it good at it now? And also, has it gone and programmed in, for example, the nav radio settings? Yes, it has. Runway 33 for Birmingham is already pre-programmed. So all we need to do is get it in the ballpark of approaching Birmingham. So if our aircraft follows the flight plan and comes over here, we can then engage approach mode. So we're coming up for about 8,000 feet after leaving stances, so we did kind of an S shape on our departure. Let's go and clean up some of this rubbish off the map from where I've been doing other things. Remove distance measurements, remove. There we go. I wonder if we can show, so if we said um, set Birmingham as the destination, also show procedures for Birmingham. ILS for runway 33. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Why is it not showing ILS for Birmingham 33? Because it should be. Anyway, we'll put that into our flight plan. So at least we can see where we're heading to. Let's zoom out on the plan so we can see we're going to go via Buzad Woban. So we're heading towards Buzad, which is over here somewhere. There it is. Add Buzad to flight plan. And we're going via Woban. Add waypoint Woban. Let's have a look through the links. So if we skip over here a little bit. Buzad Woban DTY Maple USR. There's DTY. Add to flight plan. can't find one, the easiest thing to do is search for it. Maple. That's not the right one. That one is. And to flight plan. USR. So I think this has probably got this wrong. Yeah, it has. It's got some now that I don't have. So I'm going to remove Maple. So we know generally where we're going to be during the flight. So we should now find we are at 10,000 feet. It's behaving itself, isn't it? It's quite stunning, really. Maybe the 747 is flyable now, then. And predictable. It's holding 250 knots like we asked it to. For some reason it's gone 100 feet underneath 10,000 feet. Which is a bit of a mystery. We've asked it to go to 10,000 feet. Your vertical speed and it switches itself straight off again. But now it's actually going for the last bit. think it's doing. Where is it climbing to? It's now doing a 6,000 foot climb. Okay, let's see if this is going to crash itself. All because I clicked one thing. I clicked vertical speed when, when we were already nearly at the height. And it did a 45 degree climb and it's about to stall. 
So I'm allowing the plane to almost crush itself. Okay, so there's still bugs. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? All because I went and clicked vertical speed to see if it would trigger it to recover the 100 feet. Now it's diving again. Now are the engines going to come back? Because it's now accelerating downhill like the clappers. They're only coming down at 1,000 feet a minute, but why is it holding? 1,300 feet. Ah, has it got a flight plan altitude programmed in? Has it gone into like VNAV automatically somehow? Route. Performance. Cruise. 8,500. Interesting. So let's program that for 10 thousand feet, which is flight level 100, that's correct. Has that had any impact on that? No, that's going nuts. We're doing a 25 degree climb and about to stall again. So I'm going to have to intervene and tell it to come back to 6,000 feet at least, or 5,000 feet. I'm going to do vertical speed to get there of two and a half thousand feet a minute. Or two thousand would be enough actually. I had to click that to make it think, to realise I wanted it to do it. Now, it should now come down at two thousand feet a minute, so it's now obey obeying it. But that spurious click on vertical speed when I was already at an altitude caused it to lose its mind and now it's not following uh, that may be the throttle that's causing that it's giving itself time to wind the throttles back before it's going to descend any harder otherwise it can run away with itself so it's doing its best to not accelerate so there is some logic to the things it does but that's a bit of a shame about that altitude bug. I think everybody's probably lost their lunch in the back of the aircraft. OK. And it looks like it's got a bit of a nightmare going on with the approach. So whereabouts are we? See, we're almost at Birmingham, so I'm going to have to start playing games with... We're far too high. OK. Autopilot comes off. Air brakes come out. Throttles come back. Auto throttle is off. I asked for the air brakes. I only got 50% now. So you can see if we look at... We're accelerating, but we are coming down. So I need to pull the nose up a little bit, because we're going down a bit too hard. Just watching the speed. So the autopilot still isn't anything to shout about. If you go pressing things, it tends to lose its mind completely. I'm just aware we're coming down to 10,000 feet and I shouldn't be faster than 250 knots below 10,000. So I'm going to fly it in by hand, maybe engage in approach mode at the last moment. We'll see how it goes. So 307 degrees at the moment. So let's go and correct this and get this pointing the same direction we want to go. Um, how are we doing on the altitude? Coming down pretty rapidly. So 
let's arm the auto throttle again and let it hold 250 knots for us let's switch the autopilot back on we're going for Hell nav, 1500 feet. Yeah, it's got to 5000 feet now. So it's holding 5000 feet automatically. It's accelerating again. We can turn the air brakes off. It's the reason the engines are about to come on, is because we've got air brakes hanging out all over the place. You can see they're winding back now all on their own, which is good. We are not going to let it follow this. We are going to look and see if we have picked up the glide slope. So if we go to approach mode, yeah, we can see the glide slope already. So let's go for approach mode instead of crazy ass doing circuits right in front of the airport flight plans. So let's get some flaps down, let's get the speed down to 200, 180 even. I hate the flight sim doing that. As soon as the max moves off of a control, you can't use it. So you can see we're below the glide slope and to the right of it at the moment. Let's see what this does. So I'm gradually putting the flaps down. Put the gear down now as well. And we're at full flaps. So let's look outside. Should be except intercepting the feathers and then we'll fly in. So it's all looking good actually. So you can see we're approaching the vertical part of the glide slope. The horizontal part is still over to the left, but that's fine. We're not in our L nav should give way to approach mode. So if we were to tell it so the nose is coming up gently to stop this dropping any further so it's correcting for it well that's the hope so let's turn the range down a bit so we should see this diamond sweep in soon and then the plane will bank right That didn't engage, did it, at all? I don't think it did. We're still at 5,000 feet. Okay, so I'm going to take off the autopilot. And I'm going to disengage the autothrottle. And we're going to steer left. Right. And we're 
coming down fairly steeply to catch the ILS. Here comes the vertical part of the ILS. So yeah, the autopilot on the 707 is still garbage. We should see the horizontal part sweep across any time soon. I'm going to start turning towards it anyway. We're now below the glide slope. So let's get the nose up. Yeah, here comes the horizontal part of the glide slope. So if we centre our view up. We can see the runway out there now. So we just need to follow the diamonds, basically. Sounds like a bond caper, doesn't it? Follow the diamonds. So let's fly this manually and see how we go. So 150 knots, which should be good. Don't want to get much slower than that. A bit low. slightly this is doing its famous floaty trick with the flight model you can sense it doing it it's all a bit unpredictable when you get slow in the big planes in flight simulator 2020 tries to float. Floating. So it was a bit unpredictable, wasn't it? Um, The, the flight modelling of that floating over the runway really murders it. And the, yeah, the autopilot doesn't help, but it's getting there. It's, it is better than it was, but it's not perfect. I don't suppose it ever will be, to be honest. Not with the stock aircraft, anyway. But I struggle to see how anybody else is going to make it any better using the what they call the modern flight model, because a lot of that is, is built into it. 
to the core of the simulation. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what the likes of PMDG or any of the other studios can do with it, even if they can do anything with it. So I'll just get out to this taxiway and then I'll stop the video. It's a bit of a tight turn, isn't it? help of course if flight sim 2020 had nose wheel steering done properly instead of using the rudder okay. right, I'll leave the the game there. But yeah, that was an interesting one, I suppose. It's a shame you can't have replays, isn't it, in Flight Sim 2020, and we could have got a better look at that landing to see it floating on the runway. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video there.